Um, STAR, as you know, is going to be implemented this year for the first time. Um, and the, there are some major changes between tax and STAR. Um, STAR will require new assessments in grades three through eight and the development of 12 end of course assessments for students in grades nine through 12. Students enrolled in ninth grade this year will be the first year, will be the first group of students who will take the new end of course exams. So students who are currently in 10th grade, 11th grade, so on, will continue on in tax, and so we'll phase that up one grade at a time. You have to be a first year ninth grader in order to take the EOC. To remain on the recommended program or the distinguished achievement program, uh, students have to have certain scores on their EOCs in order to attain those, um, those particular graduation programs. They'll have to meet performance targets. Um, STAR does evaluate the skills, knowledge and skills um, at a greater depth and higher cognitive complexity than TAX did. STAR will emphasize readiness in terms of being prepared for the next grade and ultimately being prepared for college and career readiness. The EOC assessments are a new form of exit level testing. Um, to achieve cumulative scores at least equal to the product, the passing standard, which really, what it really means is that the state at some point is going to decide what you have to have out of the, the um, courses for the four core areas. And we don't know exactly what that is yet, but they will tell us. Then um, the students will have to achieve that score among the three tests for English, for instance, three <coughs> tests for um, math, for science, and for social studies. This does have an impact on some of our board policies that would be EIA local, EIC local, and EIE local. Um, two of the key assessment concepts have significant policy implications. And these areas include course credit, grading, and class rank. Districts are required to have a local board policy stating that the EOC score counts as 15% of the student's final course grade. Additionally, a student is permitted to take the EOC as many times as he or she wants for any reason at any testing, at any already um, scheduled testing administration time. And then the district has option whether to count the retake score as 15% of the grade. So for instance, um, theoretically, depending on how the, the district decides to use this 15%, students could continue to take the same test over and over again to raise their score. Um, TASB has has created some worksheets for us to use, and um, those worksheets addressed three major issues. How would the EOC, first EOC score, and the retakes be considered for credits for students? How would the retake scores figure into the final course grades, or would they figure in? And the third item is the initial score or retake uh, can apply or not apply to grade point average and class rank. And so on August 1st, um, Dr. Rogers and several other people um, had the 16 staff members met to discuss these options. And our recommendation is that the EOC assessment would not affect whether the student receives credit for the courses on the student's transcript. So it would be a whole harmless. Second item is that if a student retakes an EOC, the district will not include the retake score on the final grade calculation for the course. Um, it could be a nightmare if a student decided to take the same test three times in a year, for instance. <coughs> and just to be sure that we had the student well taken care of would be um, challenging at best. So we want to make sure that that child, that every child taking it would have that first opportunity to do their very best. If they want to continue to take it, they may. It just won't affect their course. 
for students who receive special education services. The ARD committee decides what type of assessment the student takes and whether or not those courses are used for final course grades, credit decisions, and graduation requirements. The calculation of grades will be kept in accordance to the district's grading policy, and the EOC assessment scores will not be included in class rank calculations. Thank you. Questions? Dr. Hill, I've got several questions. Uh, if the ELC will count as 15% of their final grade, is that correct? Yes. At the timing of the test, will it be given around the time of finals as we know it now? Will there still be finals given as we know them now? That's one of the things that we discussed. Um, we would like to have made the, the EOC count as the final grade for the course, or the, the um, <coughs> final assessment, the end of course assessment. Um, given that at this point we're, we'll get our first set of scores after the children have graduated and left, um, we thought it was prudent that for this year alone that we go ahead and use it the way we're suggesting. Um, otherwise, we could have kids trying to go into college, junior college courses, whatever, and they still wouldn't know if they had graduated legitimately um, or if they had been upperclassmen. Um, so we, we just, before our ninth graders get out, we want them to know what their grade is, what their score is, and to have no doubts because it's hard enough for ninth graders to go in and figure out what ninth grade is all about, but then to have one system that has a complicated moving pieces that are still not discovered, um, completely uh, settled with the state gives us um, just a very complicated way for students to try to navigate through the beginning of high school. Does that make does that help? Uh, kind of. Um, you said they're whole harmless, that, that it won't count. Or, or against them or against them, but it is 15% of their final grade, but yet we're going to deduct that out of the uh, calculations for class rank? There are several implications that go with this that are very interesting, and one is the state of Texas has not yet determined how the scale score will be converted to a score that can be combined with the student's course. <laughs> there are a lot of things that are still left undetermined for us at this point. Yeah. So yes, it's very confusing. Can, can we do that though? Can we take that out of there? And run it side by side. It was one of the options in the policy document okay. that TASB sent out. So if they make a 69 in the class and make a 15 on the 15% and I just a lot of uh, a lot of uh, problems with calculating grade point averages. Sounds like a nightmare. It is a nightmare. Uh, Mr. McDaniel, uh, first off, our recommendation is that it will not count as part of the GPA. And, and we assign credit by semester, so the final grade will be over there on their transcript, but we assign credit by first semester grade, second semester grade after you take all their coursework in the semester and their semester exam. So that's what allows us to have this wiggle room until we get through this first year and then we may, you know, we'll certainly have to come back to you possibly. And I know Dr. Riddell and the committee, I mean, we don't like all the answers that, that you know, but we really felt like these were the best choices at this time. Are the scores confidential? Yes, in that you can't see other children's scores. Um, yes, in that we who have the academic need to know have access to them, but we can't reveal other people's scores. Um, and of course, the newspaper will, I'm sure, publish whatever it is that is put out whenever we find out how the ratings are going. Summary data. Thank you. I think that the I, this is just me, but I'm thinking that the way the star is designed, 
It looks like it should be easier because it's going to test one grade or so. Whereas rather than before, it's going back and through several years. So, and then, um, I don't know about that, end of the course test. That's basically, I think, how teachers are teaching now. I'd like to hear from some of them because you know, when I was in there, we did a final and the final counted so much of your grade and it definitely did count. So I was just wondering if we have anything to fear. The unknown, probably. Yes, ma'am. Until we've until we've actually had our children take it, that's the you know I'm sure everybody is thinking, oh my goodness, what's good, what is it going to be? Um, because we are as a district moving to uh, really create that engaging learning that, that fascinates and intrigues students and it keeps them thinking about the content with their friends before, during, and after school. And we have great opportunities to move the depth and the rigor of learning for all students forward in a tremendous way. 